Awesome. All right, so Hunter Biden's federal gun trial full swing today after both sides gave opening statements. And since it's 2A Tuesday, we thought you'd dig into the allegations against Hunter and his rights as an American citizen. Now, some may argue that the application Hunter is accused of lying on shouldn't exist in the first place, which I happen to subscribe to. However, it's the law. Ironically, part of the law that his father helped pass. And what further complicates things is that his father was also the architect for legislation that would penalize people even outside the purchase of a firearm for doing crack cocaine. Let's just take a look back at all the things Biden has on guns and drugs. You can't deal with crime without dealing with gun violence. More resources reduce violent crime and gun crime. Take additional common sense steps to reduce gun crimes and violence. Put that double barrel shotgun and fire two blasts outside the house. You don't need an AR-15. If you have a piece of crack cocaine, no bigger than this quarter, if you're caught with that, you go to jail for five years. Five years cracking down on gun crime. Sounds like he should lock his own son up for a long time. So Senator Joe Biden would have wanted to lock everybody up for this, including his son, if he smoked crack. You could assume that Senator Biden is in favor of the arduous application process to get a gun in many states also. So let's be honest, we probably haven't heard from the president about his son's gun trial because he knows he should be okay with whatever the jury decides. Host of the popular Bearing Arms podcast, Cam Edwards, and the director of, uh, of the Center to Keep and Bear Arms, Mike McCoy. Mike, I, I, you know, let's look at this from a trial standpoint here, in the sense that they're essentially arguing like, yeah, I know it's the law, but those federal background checks are totally unconstitutional, which is this administration has just been nailing gun owners to the wall on. Correct. That and, and a million other different things, whether it's waiting periods or, or pistol braces or anything else that they're trying to do to make it difficult for law-abiding citizens to keep and bear arms. But again, to your point, it's, it's his own son. So therefore, these things are okay. His addiction to crack, the fact that he purchased a firearm while deeply into his addiction to crack, and the evidence today was overwhelming, quite frankly, that was presented. Text messages, video messages. On top of that, the best witness today for the prosecution's case was Hunter Biden himself, through his own audiobook, where he's proudly outlining his, his memoirs at the age of how old he is, 48 or 49. Um, so it, it's, it's damning. The evidence is damning. But what's more damning is the, uh, the, the hypocrisy of the Biden administration on this point. Mm -hmm. But, Cam, look, you and, you and I are gun owners. We're looking at this, and we're saying... Hey, wait a minute. If I fill something out wrong, if I accidentally check the wrong box or, God forbid, sign something in the wrong place, I could go to jail. Like, yeah, bury him under the jail. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You're right. And, you know, you talked about you uh, not being in favor of the 4473. Uh, look, the Fifth Circuit has said that at least in the case of Patrick Darnell Daniels sending somebody to federal prison for using drugs, in this case marijuana, while owning a gun, violates his Second Amendment rights. So, you know, I think there is a constitutional question here. But as you say, the law as it exists is the law. And right. the question is whether or not Hunter Biden broke that law. And I think, uh, you know, Matt's right. The, uh, the, the audio book of Hunter Biden talking about the timeline of events, right, coming back from California uh, a month after he uh, left rehab, he was clean, he said, for about two weeks, which would indicate that he was using oh, drugs in weeks. California. He comes back to the East Coast. They had a text message from the day after he bought the gun where he talked about waiting for a dealer. It's yeah. a pretty, yeah. you know, good sign that, uh, you know, he wasn't there looking for Girl Scout cookies. So right. uh, the defense is throwing everything out there. They're trying to blame Hallie Biden, throwing her under the bus, saying maybe the drug residue on the pouch that held the gun came from her. Right. But it's going to be really hard to overcome what Hunter yeah. Biden himself has said about his addiction during that period of time when he bought that gun.